the solar system. We learn about it in school as a neat, orderly set of concentric rings. Mercury, Venus, Earth, all the way out to Neptune. It fits on a piece of paper. But this diagram lies to you. It fails to capture the terrifying, majestic scale of our true cosmic home. It is so immense that when NASA launched the Voyager mission back in 1977, the scientists knew they were embarking on a grand tour. But few could truly grasp how long it would take to reach the edge. We are talking about distances that defy human intuition. From planets that roll on their sides to storms that could swallow the Earth whole, our neighborhood is stranger and more violent than we often realize. Today, we are going to update your mental map of the cosmos. We are traveling from the burning surface of the sun to the frozen, dark wastelands of the Oort cloud. Here are nine facts about the solar system that reveal just how little we actually know. Let's begin with the farthest human outpost in existence, Voyager 1. In 2012, NASA made a historic announcement Voyager 1 had become the first human-made object to cross the boundary into interstellar space. It was a moment of triumph, but it also sparked a massive confusion about where the solar system actually ends. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause. This is the specific boundary where the solar wind, the stream of charged particles shooting out from the sun, finally loses its strength and gives way to the pressure of the interstellar medium. Essentially, it's the edge of the sun's magnetic bubble. To get there, the probe traveled over 121 astronomical units, or about 11 billion miles. But here is the mind-blowing reality. Voyager 1 has not left the solar system, not even close. If we define the solar system by gravity, meaning everything that orbits the sun, Voyager is still in the suburbs. It has yet to reach the Oort cloud a gigantic shell of icy debris that surrounds us. At its current speed of 38,000 miles per hour, Voyager won't even reach the inner edge of the Oort cloud for another 300 years. And to exit the other side, it will take between 14,000 and 28,000 years. By the time Voyager 1 truly escapes the sun's gravitational grip, humanity as we know it might not even exist. We will be cosmic dust, while our little robotic ambassador continues its silent journey into the dark. Now let's pull back to the planetary region and look at the ice giant, Uranus. To the naked eye, it looks like a calm, pale blue marble, but structurally, it is the victim of a cosmic crime. While every other planet spins somewhat like a spinning top, with their poles pointing up and down relative to their orbit, Uranus is broken. It spins on its side, its axial tilt is roughly 98 degrees. Imagine a ball rolling across the floor. That is how Uranus orbits the sun. Why does it behave this way? Scientists are convinced that this isn't natural. The leading theory is that billions of years ago, a protoplanet roughly the size of Earth, or perhaps even larger, crashed into Uranus with cataclysmic force. This impact didn't just knock the planet over. It likely reshaped its interior and created its chaotic magnetic field, which is also tilted and off-center. Uranus is essentially a planetary crash scene that never recovered. This severe tilt leads to the most extreme seasons found anywhere in the solar system. On Earth, we complain about a long winter, but a Uranian winter is the stuff of nightmares. A single year on Uranus takes 84 Earth years to complete. Because the planet is rolling on its side, the sun shines directly over one pole for a quarter of that year. This means that for 21 years straight, the North Pole is bathed in constant sunlight, while the South Pole is plunged into absolute pitch black darkness. If you were born on the dark side of Uranus, you would spend the first two decades of your life never seeing the star that gives the system its name. When the seasons finally change during the equinox, the entire planet experiences rapid day-night cycles, leading to massive storms and winds that can reach 560 miles per hour. It is a world of freezing, dark extremes. Let's come closer to home. Our moon is a familiar sight, but we often forget how geologically dead it really is compared to Earth. On Earth, wind, rain, and tectonic shifts constantly rewrite history. 
Mountains crumble, rivers change course, and footprints wash away in seconds. The moon has none of this. It has no atmosphere to create wind, no water to create erosion, and no active volcanoes to resurface the land. This turns the moon into the ultimate museum. The famous footprints left by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in 1969, they are still there, crisp and sharp, exactly as they were over 50 years ago. The rovers, the descent stages, and the scientific equipment are sitting in perfect preservation. The only thing that changes the lunar surface is cosmic weathering, the slow bombardment by micrometeoroids and solar radiation. But this process is incredibly slow. Unless a large meteor happens to strike that exact spot, the evidence of humanity's first steps will outlast the pyramids of Egypt, and perhaps even human civilization itself. When we look up, the sun seems all-powerful, and locally, it is. The sun contains 99.8% of the total mass of the solar system. Its radius is nearly 700,000 kilometers. You could fit 1.3 million Earths inside it comfortably. But in the galaxy, our sun is a dwarf. It is an average yellow star, drifting in a sea of giants. If you hopped on a standard passenger jet and flew along the surface of the sun, it would take you about six or seven months to complete one lap. That's a long flight. Now, compare that to the hypergiant star UY Scuti. If you flew that same plane around UY Scuti, the journey wouldn't take months. It would take over 1,000 years. The sun is massive to us. But on the cosmic scale, it is merely a grain of sand compared to the true monsters of the Milky Way. We used to think moons were rare. Earth has one, Mars has two tiny ones, and Mercury and Venus have none. But as we traveled to the outer solar system, we realized that moons are the rule, not the exception. The gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, are locked in an eternal contest for the title of Moon King. Currently, both planets have counts exceeding 90 confirmed moons, and the number keeps climbing as our telescopes get better at spotting small, irregular rocks. But it's not just about the number, it's about diversity. These aren't just dead rocks. Jupiter's moon Ganymede is larger than the planet Mercury and has its own magnetic field. Saturn's moon Titan has a thick atmosphere and liquid methane lakes. And then there are Enceladus and Europa, moons that hide vast liquid water oceans beneath thick shells of ice. If we ever find life beyond Earth, it likely won't be on a planet, but on one of these icy moons orbiting the giants. In 2019, the New Horizons probe, the same hero that gave us our first clear images of Pluto, flew past an object in the Kuiper Belt, roughly 4 billion miles from Earth. Its official name is Arakoth, but you might recognize it by its shape, a cosmic snowman. Arakoth is a contact binary, it consists of two separate spheres that gently drifted together and fused. What makes Arakoth so special is how it formed. The two lobes didn't smash into each other at high speed. They likely spiraled around each other, slowly losing momentum until they kissed at a speed no faster than a human walking pace. This object is a pristine fossil. It has been kept in the deep freeze of the outer solar system since the birth of the sun. Studying Arakoth is like looking at a baby picture of our planetary system, showing us exactly how planets began to form from dust and pebbles 4.5 billion years ago. For decades, Pluto was the odd one out. But in 2006, we realized Pluto wasn't an oddity. It was just the first of a new class. We now know the outer solar system is crowded with dwarf planets like Eris, Haumea, and Makemake. But the hunt isn't over. Astronomers recently identified an object officially named 2015 TG387, but affectionately nicknamed the Goblin because it was discovered near Halloween. The Goblin is small, perhaps only 190 miles wide, but its orbit is spectacular. It never comes closer to the sun than 65 astronomical units, and it travels out as far as 2300 AU. It takes 40,000 years to complete one trip around the sun. Its existence, along with other distant objects like Sedna, hints at something massive hiding in the dark, shepherding these orbits. This is one of our strongest clues for the existence of the theoretical Planet Nine. 
let's return to the king of planets, Jupiter. Its most famous feature is the Great Red Spot, a high-pressure anticyclone that has been raging for at least 350 years. It is an icon of the solar system, but the Great Red Spot is dying. In the late 1800s, the storm was estimated to be 25,000 miles wide, large enough to fit three or four Earths. Today, it has shrunk to barely the width of one Earth. The winds are speeding up at the edges, and amateur astronomers are watching chunks of the storm peel away in events called flaking. While the storm has deep roots extending hundreds of miles into Jupiter's atmosphere, giving it stability, the surface area is undeniably shrinking. We may be the last generation to see the Great Red Spot as a great feature, before it potentially fades into a memory. Before we go, we must remember, the solar system is not a statue. It is a vehicle. We reside in the Orion arm of the Milky Way, located about 25,000 light years from the galactic core. We are orbiting a supermassive black hole right now, traveling at 500,000 miles per hour. But the galaxy is so vast that it takes us roughly 230 to 250 million Earth years to complete just one orbit. This is called a galactic year. Think about this. The last time our solar system was in this exact part of the galaxy, the dinosaurs were just beginning to evolve. The continents on Earth were fused together in the supercontinent Pangaea. Flowers didn't exist yet. We have traveled a full circle since then. And the next time we arrive here, who knows what or who will be living on Earth? From the silent boundary of the heliopause to the towering peaks of Mars, our solar system is a place of endless wonder. It is ancient, violent, and much larger than we can truly comprehend. Which of these facts blew your mind the most? Do you think Voyager will survive to see the other side of the Oort cloud? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this journey, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.